Like it or not, our present lives cannot escape what is trending. Whether it is a kitten on a piano or a drone strike in Iraq, our smartphones bombard us with trends. Many of these last as long as a snowflake on a warm windshield, tickling us briefly only to melt away. One of these trends, however, has thrived into its teenage years, justice. Not only does the topic of justice top the Twitter lists every week, but justice has grown to embrace issues from plastic straws to the Arab Spring. Everyone cares about justice, and every aspect of life must be just. Yet, as we consume the blogs and podcasts, one cannot help but ask, to spin off of Pilate's question. What is justice? What is universally loved is widely debated. For ease of discussion, what the left calls just, the right calls unjust and vice versa, and the divisions within our country are also well entrenched in the church. Among evangelical Christians, who profess loyalty to scripture, little agreement over what justice is seems to exist. It is good, therefore, to ask what the Bible says about justice. How does scripture define justice? More precisely for our purposes, we will outline a biblical theology of justice, and as we will see, it's not an easy task. As it is with many biblical themes, it is helpful to begin with the end, to gaze on the glory of heaven and mark how the Lord brings us into his never-ending bliss. Indeed, several features grab us from the closing pages of Revelation with respect to justice. First, final and perfect justice is ushered in only by the final day and the age to come. In his wisdom, the Lord overlooks a plethora of injustices and wickedness in this age, but his patience ends on the day of eternity. This justice includes the perpetual fires of hell and the avenging of all wrongs for Christ's people. According to scripture, all justice sought and performed in this age is imperfect and remedial. For example, the only just restitution for murder is resurrection, which we anticipate when Christ returns. Second, the performance of this ultimate justice can be executed only by the all-wise and glorified Christ. The wisdom of the Lamb alone can perform final justice. The saints may share in this with Christ, but the justice is all Christ's. Third, one aspect of this final justice has already taken place in history in the atonement of Christ. The cross is where Christ satisfied justice for his own, so that believers are saved from the justice they deserve. This is the gospel gem of justice in scripture, when sinners are delivered from justice and mercy triumphs over justice for us in Christ. In this, the gospel is set over against and contrasted with justice. By justice, we are all condemned, but in Christ, we are justified by grace alone. Yet, as we trace the trajectory of justice from Genesis to Revelation, three preliminary caution signs need to be posted. The first is that within our biblical discussions about justice, we tend to fall into the chronic error of anachronisms. Without factual evidence, our surmises about biblical characters or ideas are at best guesses, but more often are merely arrogant self-impositions. These self-imposed anachronisms pervasively affect the issues of fairness, rights, and the ideal, which are all part of justice. With patient work, we must humbly chasten ourselves to distinguish between what scripture actually means and what we as moderns assume it to mean. The second caution lies in the selective proof texting that is another trend in our current writings on justice. That is, we pick the Bible verses we like, and we ignore the passages that do not fit nicely into our viewpoint. Many theories of justice resemble more their author's opinion or agenda than the Bible. Two mercies must handle this problem. One, as sinners, our self-orientation constantly steers us toward this error, and none of us are immune. Two, the Bible is a wildly diverse document, therefore, trying to harmonize all the data of scripture on justice is an extremely difficult endeavor, if not impossible on this side of glory. This is why our approach to justice is biblically theological, with quite modest goals. The third danger in dealing with the issues of justice in scripture is our modern expectations. We often want scripture to answer our pressing problems completely and in the manner of our preferences. Similarly, our current discussions on justice are juiced up with polemical steroids. In the heat of debate, we demand scripture to fully endorse our positions and explicitly condemn our opponents' positions. Our present discussions reveal a penchant for simplistic sound bites and talking points. Yet more often than not, the data of scripture do not easily support either side of the partisan divide, and the Bible is unapologetically complex about justice. Without wisdom, there is no justice, and wisdom is a most elusive virtue for humans. As the discipline of Proverbs so well impresses upon us, there is no learning without first saying, I do not know. So, we begin our brief time together admitting that we do not really know what justice is. With these three dangers spotlighted, we are now better equipped to study honestly what the sacred pages of God's word say about justice. 
we can humbly hold at bay our personal agendas and expectations, and we can be more aware of how different our modern presuppositions are from the ancient world of the Bible, so that we do not impose anachronistic standards on holy writ. Scripture is clear that justice is defined by God's law and that the core of this law is the Lord's unchanging moral law, which is summarily comprehended in the two laws of love. Love God and love your neighbor, WSC 41-42, Mark 12-29-31, Romans 13-9. The love laws form the stable foundation of justice. Yet, in a fallen world, the love laws cover only part of justice, what is called primary justice. This is the positive treatment of your neighbors in which you proactively render to them the respect they are due. It covers both the act of performing good and doing no harm. The golden rule, loving your neighbor, however, is only one side of the justice coin. Where does that leave us? As the church, we are commissioned to herald the free gospel of grace, a mercy that triumphs over justice. We proclaim mercy as the opposite of the lex talionis. As individuals, scripture arms us with the fundamental but skeletal principles of the moral law, and it calls us to wisdom. In wisdom, there is diversity of application within our unity in Christ. Indeed, as we struggle to apply justice and righteousness across our lives and world, we realize just how weak and limited is our wisdom. As our best efforts fall short, as the world hates us for our faith in Christ, grace lifts our eyes away from this ephemeral age to gaze on glory and pray, come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. For then, and only then, will we enjoy the fullness of Christ's justice and righteousness and the holy peace of heaven.